What is going on guys? We are back for another episode of Pokemon Top 5s. This week we'll be covering the normal typing, uh, one of the most balanced typings in the game. Uh, a pretty bulky offensive typing or kind of just your basic, like kind of low quality Pokemon early in a game. But um, this will give a really cool top 5 list here for you guys. Um, and of course, as always, make sure to leave a like, subscribe if you haven't already, and leave your top 5s in the comment section down below. Um, you know, of course, with my list in particular, uh, we don't include legendaries. I do intend to do a separate video for legends later on, as well as I only include primary and pure typing for uh, our top five lists, just so that we don't get any duplicates when we do our list. So, uh, without further ado, though, let us hop in to number five. All right, so at number five, we have Porygon 2. Uh, this is one of my favorite uh, Pokemon. Um, it's honestly just so, so bulky. You put an Eevee Light on this thing, it has crazy defensive stats. It already had 85 HP with 90 and 95 in both defenses. You put an Eevee Light on that, you're giving it a 1.5 times boost to both defenses, which makes it just an absolute monster. And it still has 105 attack. Like, this is what people don't understand. Porygon 2 is a thick, thick boy that can attack hard as shit. Um, and so obviously, throughout the competitive years anyways for this Pokemon, um, <clears throat> it, excuse me, uh, has had a ton of value. Um, in the older days, you know, it gets, it gets Bolt Beam, so uh, Ice Beam thun uh, Ice Beam and Thunderbolt kind of hit everything for neutral damage. Or you can just rock it with Tri-Attack and do a ton of damage that way. Um, it's always kind of run Toxic or Thunder Wave as kind of like this support move. Uh, Trick Room if you're playing doubles, Teleport and Singles now. Uh, has Reliable Recovery with the move Recover. Like, it just does so much useful stuff. It also has Trick Room, so, uh, for those double players, Trick Room is obviously super valuable. Um, but besides just the competitive standpoint, you know, like, I haven't got to use one in a Let's Play yet on the channel but i have used it before um it's always been super fun to use obviously porygon it's hard to get um just because it is kind of like a trade with item um so for people who don't really have a ton of way to do that it is kind of a difficult pokemon to obtain but um trust me if you get this pokemon it's super super dope um obviously all of its abilities are really good too trace uh download or analytic all three of them have very very useful resources with them and so um you know it doesn't really matter what one you get you're gonna have a really good one but um and design wise the fact that it's like a rubber duck is so hilarious to me uh porygon like looks like the part of like a scientist created like digital pokemon kind of deal right um but then porygon too i don't understand and Porygon Z is even weirder. Um, but yeah, Porygon 2 is a design that I like the best. And uh, it had to be on my list. So without further ado though, let us hop in to number four. All right, so at number four, we have a relatively new Pokemon, Oranguru. Uh, this Pokemon came out in generation seven. Uh, it's kind of another one of those like bigger monkey Pokemon, which I've always kind of liked the monkey Pokemon for some reason. I don't know why, but Oranguru just uh, known for its intelligence, right? So um, it's kind of like a inexperienced, you can kind of see it, right? It's tendency to be cautious uh, towards an inexperienced trainer. Um, it clearly can um, be kind of a guru or mentor. And so you don't want to have some inexperienced trainer with this thing. Um, but obviously this is just kind of like Porygon in a way, right? Uh, pretty bulky, you know, 80 in both defenses, or 80 in its defense, 110 in its special defense, 90 HP. Uh, but this thing is more of a dedicated Trick Room support Pokemon. Uh, Trick Room, you can get Nasty Plot to be a threat itself offensively. Psychic Focus Blast is kind of your main moves, but it has a very unique move that is signature to it. It's called Instruct. And what it does is it makes the Pokemon that just use the last move that you select use their move again. And so when this thing first came out, uh, Generation 7 was a pretty slow competitive um, format. And so there was a lot of Trick Room. There was a lot of, you know, Torkoal had just gotten Drought. Um, and so the 
common thing to do would be that you would have a Rangaroo, uh, Blossom, I think it was, and Torkoal as a team. And Torkoal would go for Eruption in the sun under Trick Room, do a massive amount of damage. You'd have Telepathy so you didn't get hit with it as well. Um, and then you would go for Instruct and it would then use Eruption again. Um, and so you would just do a massive amount of damage. Um, and anyways, so as far as competitively, this thing is, is pretty, it's pretty niche now. Like it isn't considered like the top tier or anything like that, but it is kind of a niche pick that's pretty cool to use. I think, um, and for me, like, I just really like the monkey Pokemon's, like I said, right? Um, you know, we saw Rillaboom on, an, on a previous list. Uh, I'm sure there's going to be other monkeys kicking around these lists as well. So uh, without further ado, though, let us hop in to number three. All right, guys, so at number three, we have Snorlax, the uh, thick, thick boy. Uh, it's actually kind of funny that this Pokemon was created by uh, taking inspiration from one of the people that was helping make Pokemon. Um, just someone who was super gluttonous, and so they kind of made a Pokemon around it. Um, yeah, I mean, thick, fat, gluttony, uh, two pretty good abilities. Same with immunity, it's also a pretty good third ability. Um, but this thing was one of the Pokemon that, in Generation 1, and especially before the physical special split, um, this thing was a monster. Um, in Generation 1, think about it this way. 160 t uh, HP, 110 attack, 65 defense, and then having 110 in its special category, and then going to 30. And that 110 eventually ended up switching all the special defense, but... Um, in the original games, man, like, this thing could hit so hard on both physical and special. Then the physical special split comes in, and obviously it's now a, a pure physical attacker with just really good HP and really good special defense stats. But Snorlax has always been known for one of two things. Um, it's gonna be kind of this rest, sleep talk, recycle, maybe body slam or it's rocking like curse or belly drum and then it's just like going earthquake fire punch and just absolutely obliterating everything that it sees um obviously from the anime this is where i fell in love with this pokemon this pokemon uh ash had used amazingly considering the fact that he could barely function as a trainer at that point um and so that's kind of what got me uh, interested in Snorlax. and then obviously competitively it's super super dope um it kind of fits me a little bit i kind of just like to you know, when I want to just chill out and not do anything, like, I just want to be a Snorlax. And I think uh, a lot of people feel that way sometimes. So, uh, but without further ado, let us hop in to number two. All right, so at number two, we have Kangaskhan, the parent Pokemon. Now, Kangaskhan, its mega evolution literally changed the game. Literally changed the game. Um, one of the most dominant, most used Pokemon ever in Pokemon. It was on almost every single team the moment that Mega Evolution came out. It was, it, it literally changed the game. Um, it was literally one of the defining Pokemon of an entire generation of Pokemon. Um, but before that, it was kind of irrelevant. And that's what I really like about this Pokemon. It's Mega Evolution is... It took a Pokemon that really wasn't that relevant and made it super relevant again. And that's kind of what Mega Evolution was really going for, right? Obviously, the fan favorites that got all of the love and, you know, Charizard gets two Mega Evolutions. Lucario got a Mega Evolution. Gardevoir got a Mega Evolution. Salamence got a Mega Evolution. Metagross got a Mega Evolution. Like, all the super popular Pokemon got one. But this was one of the Pokemon where they took something that really wasn't... I guess performing up to what they envisioned the Pokemon to be, and they made it something really, really good and really, really strong again. And I think that's why I have such an appreciation for this Pokemon. Um, obviously a pretty good Pokemon in its own right, 105 HP, 95 attack, 80 in both defenses, and 90 speed. Pretty decent. Its Mega Evolution then gets about 100 stat points, and it all goes to attack and its two defenses and speed. Um, so it made it bulkier, 
it made it stronger and it made it faster and i mean when you add all that combination i think it was just ignore it was impossible to ignore how good it was going to be parental bond lets you do 30 percent of the damage that your original attack did and it attacks again so it was getting through like focus sashes and sturdies and stuff it was just super super dominant uh, but this Pokemon, basically its entire existence has relied on Fake Out, Sucker Punch, Double Edge, and some combination of Low Kick um, or other fighting move. Uh, Earthquake was used at one point as well. Um, Power Up Punch was kind of a new a new one when uh, the Parental Bond came out, giving you basically a Swords Dance boost that attacked. Um, it was pretty damn wild. Um, but yeah, this Pokemon obviously is super dope. Um, I wish they would actually come out with another kind of like kangaroo Pokemon, but this is the closest that we got, and kangaroo is super dope. So design-wise, I had no complaints. Competitively, this thing is awesome. Uh, I really had no other choice. Um, this thing realistically should be number one if you're looking at it just for statistics um, and how good it was competitively. But like I said, my top fives aren't always based on that. So uh, without further ado, let us hop in to number one. All right, so at number one, we have Knocked Owl, the owl Pokemon. Now, I actually, yeah, people are gonna look at me and go, what the hell is wrong with you? Why is Knocked Owl ahead of Kangaskhan and Snorlax? I'll tell you why. Owls are one of my favorite animals, period. There is no rhyme or reason for it. I have always, always, always loved it. Um, you know, I was into Harry Potter. Hedwig my favorite character, like, don't care about shit about the humans. I only care about Hedwig. Same thing, right? Guardians of the Galaxy, or not Guardians of the Galaxy, Guardians of whatever it was called. Oh my god. It was like that, like, uh, book series that ended up being a movie. Like, um, a bunch of owls. And one of my favorite movies. Holes, one of my favorite movies. Don't, it's not even that it's a good movie. It's just I liked owls. And so this thing, for no other reason, really had to be number one on my list. Um, the anime gave it a ton of love with a shiny version that Ash got, um, and obviously, super dope, right? Um, <clears throat> competitively, this thing is not great, but, um, Z-moves, when Z-moves were a thing in Generation 7, this got a little bit of love, and obviously, with Gigantamaxing now in Generation 8, um, you know, playing Max, Max Airstream and whatever the normal one is, um, I mean, it's a super good setup move for any Pokemon that's on your team. And so it got a little bit of love, which is kind of nice to see. But um, I, there's no pretending that this Pokemon is good competitively. But, um, you know, 50 in a defense stat is not good enough. 70 in a speed stat is not good enough. And 70 in attack stat is not good enough. Uh, and 50 in its other one. So, um, you know, this is just one of my low, my low tier love of my life's Pokemon, you know. So, um... Yeah, but um, it gets Agility, Whirlwind, work, work Up, Reflect, uh, kind of has good support moves, has Reliable Recovery with Roost, it can Defog, Toxic Hypnosis, that kind of thing. Um, and then you can uh, kind of Nightshade, uh, Hurricane, Air Slash, you know, it doesn't really have the greatest move pool, but um, yeah, I just love it. There's just no, there's no explaining my nostalgia and my, my adoration for this Pokemon, so... Um, but yeah, that is our top five normal types this week. Um, I know a little bit of a curveball for the number one slot, but, um, yeah, there's just nothing to really say about it. Um, but with that, I'm gonna get up out of here. Make sure to leave your guys' top five in the competition down below. If you guys want to include legendaries, go ahead. Um, or secondary typings, go ahead. That doesn't bother me at all. But, um, but yeah, uh, thanks everyone for watching, and I will see you guys in the next one.